Hi, Paco. Hello. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Friday. You know what day it is? It's Friday. It's Q&A day. Okay, we've got... Hi, Yuku. How are you? She always licks me. Always, like a dog. Anyway, welcome to the Q&A. We do this every Friday for my new subscribers. We have a Q&A. We have a magic watch ball Q&A. Uh, a lot of the questions we've kind of toned off of the watch ball a little bit, just more of a regular Q&A. Um, but if you want to wa ask the magic watch ball a question, you can. She is a smart ass. She can be serious and she can be funny. But the way it works is you just ask the question. And if it's for the ball, you know, she'll answer you, and then I'll give my two cents. And if it's just a question for me, then I'll just answer it. Um, anyway, so uh, we got a lot of questions this week, or a few anyway. And if, if you want your question answered, just go ahead and leave a comment, and it'll be featured in my next coming up Q&A. So let's roll the intro. And I'm sorry, I got a little thrown off because of my cats all of a sudden just decided, hey, daddy's home, because I just got home. All right, let's roll the intro. Alrighty, let's get this party started quickly. All right, I am wearing my OP36 green. Love this watch. So we'll start with the first question that comes from Jose Pammy. Jose Pammy, Pammy, Pammy. I know who you are. All right, cool. Um, my son is showing some interest with watches and he's only nine. I want to gift him something that he can wear but suitable for his age. If you don't mind suggesting a watch for him to wear whenever we are out, thank you in advance and stay awesome. You're awesome. Cool. Well, you know, I'd go with the Rolex day date. Yeah. You're not a good parent unless you get him a day date. Psh, get him a Rolex. Yeah. If you can't get him a day date, get him a Submariner, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, or you can go with that Invicta. Invicta's cool. 55 millimeter man you could wrap that shit around his neck sorry for the language if he's watching i apologize um yeah invicta no. that's awesome that he's nine years old and i believe your husband just got a new rolex at bindi so congratulations to him and uh you know thank you for subscribing and all that good stuff you know with something like that um you know I, I was going to recommend like just a Casio, like, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I don't know the reference numbers on the Casios, but the digital ones, but you know, I don't know if he knows how to tell time with an analog watch, but I would recommend an analog watch that way it gets him used to seeing, you know, and, and if he doesn't know how to tell time, learning the time and always knowing what time it is kind of like that. Um, there's, a, I mean, if you want to go on the, something that I think would be kind of dressy for like a nine year old, if you're going out like a Timex Marlin. Um, it's 34 millimeter and I believe you can get the gold one for like a hundred and something dollars on Amazon I think the stainless steel just go on Amazon and check that out there are some also some also there are also some smaller Casios that are analog that you can get for 40 50 bucks actually less than that um, and just just do some research on on that you know what I mean but if you get, if you got a little dressy, go with the Marlin. That's really cool. If you want to spend a hundred bucks or hundred and fifty bucks, and the, and he's a good kid and he's worth it, then I would do that. Other than that, get him the platinum day date. All right, Pammy, thank you so much for your question. Watch Warrior eight five nine seven. Tony, have you ever played the Greek bazooki before? I heard your ukulele flamenco that you did, and it's amazing. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, just wanted to know if you had ever picked up the bazooki. Uh, watches are not only my passion, and music has always been there. Awesome, dude. No, I have not. Um, I have a friend who's Greek who, who does play it or has played it. His name's Phil X. He's, in, uh, he's the guitar player for Bon Jovi. He has been for several years now. Um, knowing him and I go way back. But um, yeah, he, he takes some bazooki licks and puts them on the guitar, which is really cool. He's a great guitar player. Um, but I haven't, so there you have it. But, uh, 
Awesome, man. Thank you. Um, this is from David Parrish Productions. All right. Hey, David, how you doing, man? Sorry you didn't win the Emmy last week. There's always next year. At least you were nominated. Um, okay, question for next week. What watches surprise you by making you like them? Everybody likes subs and Daytonas, but what pieces make you say, I've really grown as a collector. I never thought I'd like this, and now I do. Yeah, that's a pretty good question, isn't it? Um, you know, my tastes haven't changed all that much since I've been in my 20s. You know, it's for some reason fairly consistent. I think in the sense it has changed, whereas before I would wear nothing but uh, leather bracelets, le leather straps, um, and the only exception would be for a Rolex, like a Datejust. And I think also some of the, the you know, like the, and I've always loved Vacheron Constantin, but I, or Patek Philippe, I would have never, I, I thought the 5711 was ugly and boring, you know? And now I can appreciate it so much more for what it is, for what it isn't, right? If you take all the grand complication out of it, you have a simple three hand with a date um, complication at the uh, three o'clock. It's just, it's beauty, it's simplistic beauty and elegance. It doesn't need to be all, you know, in your face with chronographs, moon phase. I mean, I love moon phase, but you know what I mean? Annual calendars and whatever. So, um, or perpetual calendars, whatever. So it's things like that. I just love, I think more simple watches actually. And that's just because I, you know, with all the chronographs and all those other complicated watches, you know, when it comes to servicing, not only they're, they're more expensive, you know, it's, I can't even hardly see them anymore. You know, when you look at the watch, you know what I mean? I like very simple watches now. Um, so I think that's where, I think in life in general, it's the simple things that are, that are easier for me and better for me that suit me. Um, you know, because I've had, I think when I was younger, you know, the, all the cars, you know, the big houses and whatever, you know, not, not always, but you know, so that's probably where it is. Now I just like simple things. So thanks, man. I always appreciate your questions. Uh, this is from NJCSRT4. Love the videos, Tony. I look forward to your Friday Q&A. Thanks, dude. Question for next week. I currently have a Rolex 124060. That would be the Submariner with no date. That is a, a beautiful watch. Um, and love it as my only watch. That's your only watch? All right. Um, however, I'm having the itch to buy a Batgirl. My concern is not having the flexibility of the glide lock with the GMT. Since you have both, uh, if you had to pick just one, which would be your choice and why? I'll take the GMT any day of the week, dude. Sorry. Um, but if you're going for that, yes, the glide lock, once you get used to that, it's really hard to not have it, right? I mean, you still have the five millimeter uh, easy link with the GMT, but um, that glide link, dude, there's something about it that just like makes it so easy just in a second to just, you know, change the size of the watch. So, I mean, I do love that aspect of it. Um, however, I'd still take the GMT. Get one. Good luck with that. Next question is from, is at the bottom there. I'm not going to answer your question because you, you left me a, you had a good question and then you left me a shitty message, dude. So, sorry, go fuck yourself. Um, David9633, thank you for the episode, Tony. You're welcome and thank you for watching. Question for a future video. What is your wrist size and how do you use to store your watches at home and while taking a, a watch on a trip? My wrist size is six and a half inches, so it's a fairly, it's small, but, you know, it's a common size, um, you know. Uh, what do I use? I keep my watches in watch boxes, um, and when I'm on a trip, I don't ever take too many watches when I go on a trip. In fact, I don't travel that much anymore, but when I do, I only take about uh, probably two watches, and then I'll take a watch roll. So, and then the, the watch roll that I primarily use is a Wolf watch roll. Um, super comfy, and your watches love it. Safe. Um, so thanks for your question, man. I do appreciate it. Um, toasted Bagel 199. Love the videos, Tony. Thank you, and I love the fact that you love my videos. Always enjoyable to watch at the end of the week. Got a question for next week's video. I don't notice you going after many two-tone watches. What's your opinion on those? I personally want the two-tone Explorer when I'm able to get a Rolex, but it will be a while until then. 
I think the gold adds nice aesthetics and who doesn't like a little gold? Appreciate it. Yeah, man, I don't have any beef with the gold. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just more of a stainless steel guy, you know? Um, it's I, it's kind of, I don't, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I just don't have a problem with them. I, I either want all gold or all steel. If I had a two-tone, I've had a two-tone date just before. I mean, it's, it's cool. And for those people that really love them, it's cool. I don't have anything against them. I don't ever sit there and go, oh, no, 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 it's not for me. I, who knows? I might get one. But it's just, just, that's just my preference, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. But good luck on getting your Explorer two-tone. All right, uh, Davis Prince, 5616. Hey, Tony, Davis here, checking in again. How you doing, Davis? I went into my AD to have my MK1126610 LV sized on Thursday. That, uh, that's awesome, dude. I've been on the list for the Sprite since it came out, and, it, uh, and he showed me one and said he was advocating for me for this watch. What does that mean? Davis, it means he's advocating for you. It means he's got an eye out for you. It means he's looking out for you. He's rooting for you. He wants you to get it. So if he said that, uh, there's no reason for him to lie, you know? I mean, but then again, um, I do have known some ADs to lie, so, or not be truthful, or sort of steer around the truth, if you want to go that direction. So hopefully you'll get it, man. You know, so just stay on top of it, and, and, uh, and hopefully you'll get it. I'm sure you will, you know? Just let me know when you get it. All right, good luck, dude. Um, Eric Smith, 214. Do you think the VC222 would sell more than the overseas uh, if it was produced in the same quantities as the overseas? Wonderful videos. Thanks, man. Uh, he's talking about the Vacheron Constantine 222. This is a re-release of their vintage 222. For those of you who don't know what the Vacheron Constantine 222 is, I mean, I'll throw up a picture, but it's if you see the... Uh, uh, the Tissot PRX, it's the watch that has that sort of aesthetic to it, except obviously it came out way before the PRX did. And it's, uh, it's an homage to their, their, their history of that, that watch, the, her the heritage and the history of the, the 222. It's a freaking gorgeous watch. I love that watch. Do I think it would be, would sell more than the, the overseas? Yeah, probably. I think it might, but the difference is, is the fact that it's all solid gold, right? Whereas the overseas is not, um, so obviously the you're, you're looking at uh, stainless steel watch is probably going to be a bigger seller regardless. But I think if it were readily available, it obviously would sell a lot more. I don't think they're a limited edition. In fact, I'm I'm almost 100% certain they're not limited. But um, but or it might you know I don't know how many they're making, but they're not that easy to get. But they're a beautiful watch. Anyway, yeah, hope that answered your question. Thanks, dude. Andy Prez, 250. Can you show what kind of travel watch cases you use and brand? Also, what are good watches? Excuse me, excuse me. Can you show what kind of travel watch cases you use and brand? Also, what are good watch cases to purchase? I, the, the Wolf Roll is a good one. Um, and there, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, watch cases that I have are boxes, like watch boxes you're talking about. Um, I've got boxes that I don't know the names of that I've just had them for so long I can't even remember. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying one off Amazon for like 40 or 50 bucks. Those are garbage. I can only say that because I bought a couple and they sucked ass. Um, the pillows were too big and you couldn't get the watch around it, you know, and loose, you know what I mean? So you got to make sure you got to get a good one if you're going to get one. If you've got a good collection, then they deserve a good watch box, right? So, um, yeah, that's that. All right, uh, Andy. Okay, so next one is oh, never mind. It's that dude again that uh, that likes to hate. Um, question for next Q and A. This is from Gordon Harwell. Hey, Gordon, how you doing, man? Uh, what are the coolest watch accessories out there? Do you think watch winders are bad for the watch? I don't. I have a watch winder that's a four slot watch winder. I don't ever use it, and I haven't used it in several years. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad for the watch because really, I mean, some people will argue that, well, yeah, it just keeps the watch running when it's not being worn, you know, but what, what about when you're just wearing the watch all the time and it doesn't ever stop? I mean, you're still, you're still using it. You're still wearing it. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think they're important for, for perpetual can calendars and annual calendars. Um, so, 
you know, I mean, and like my buddy Lincoln bought a watch winder for his GMT Master 2 because um, it doesn't like setting it when, it when it stops and I can get on board with that too. But um, me, when mine stops, I mean, I haven't watched my, worn my GMT Master 2 since I came back from Nashville. So it's just sitting there, I mean, so setting it, whatever, it's not too much of a big deal for me, but some people like them, you know? So I'm not gonna say no. Um, accessories other than that, I mean, there's different straps, that, you know, I guess they would be considered accessories if you get different straps, you know what I mean? Um, but other than that, you know, I, uh, or boxes, I guess, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Anyway, I hope, uh, you guys all like, subscribe, and blah, 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 all that good stuff, and I will see you. I have another video coming up probably tomorrow, and it should be a good one. Peace out.